The Sons of Attila update has introduced some major reworks into aircraft radar warning systems. Today, we'd like to tell you everything you need to know about RWR. Our work on the warning system was aimed at bringing their in-game performance in line with their real-life counterparts. In realistic and simulator modes, all models now have their own frequency ranges and operating modes. We left everything unchanged in arcade mode to keep things simple. We'll need some theory first. For a radar warning receiver to work, its frequency range needs to cover the radar's band. We've added relevant ranges for each RWR device in the game, which you can see if you point your cursor at the pilot in X-ray mode. If you want to know how radar and RWR systems interact, all you need to do is cross-reference the numbers shown for each of them. Keep in mind that RWRs detect all radars within their range, both friendly and hostile. Moreover, if your aircraft gets inside the ray of a radar that's locked onto a different target, your RWR will be triggered too, despite the fact that another player is being attacked. In some cases, it might feel like the system is working incorrectly. At short ranges, for instance, you might get a lock-on alarm even when your plane is aside of or even behind the radar ray. It has to do with the fact that all antennas don't just emit signals towards the target with their so-called main lobe. They also emit signals to the sides and even to the rear. Of course, the signal directed towards the main lobe is orders of magnitude stronger than the side and rear lobes, but it might still be enough for a radar warning system to be triggered at a short range. Besides, all RWRs have limited signal reception angles. For instance, they'll miss radar signals coming directly from above or below the aircraft. We also need to note that when we implemented side and rear lobes, we didn't do it to make RWRs detect radiation in unexpected situations and confuse players. We did it to make radar antennae work as realistically as possible near the ground. As mentioned in our video on radar systems, side lobes get reflected by the ground, which creates interference and limits the capabilities of radar. But we digress. Time to get back to the game changes. Some RWRs, like those present on the Su-7B, Mirage 3E, F-4C, and the F-14A, can no longer detect radars in tracking mode. The indicator will show that there's a signal detected, but you won't see the familiar dashed line or hear the alarm sound. More modern RWRs will work the old way. In tracking mode, they'll inform the pilot of the direction to the signal source with a dashed line connecting to the center of the indicator and prompt them with the track message. In simulator mode, signals from pulse Doppler radars are no longer registered by earlier systems. In addition to aircraft mentioned earlier, the top Italian starfighter has lost this capability. In realistic and arcade battles, all receivers will detect signals from pulse Doppler radars but will be unable to identify the platform of the radar. Now, it might feel like the sole purpose of this RWR rework is to reduce their efficiency. In fact, the limits only affect old models, while modern stations received new capabilities. After detecting a signal, some systems will now be able to do more than just show the direction to it. They'll provide real-time tracking and show its movement relative to your own aircraft by moving the mark on the indicator. New sources of radar signals are also highlighted with a circle. Arguably, the most important change is the new identification of radar signal sources. All RWRs can be divided into three groups. Group 1 can detect a signal but cannot identify the source. Group 2, however, can identify the type of the source. Aircraft with such RWRs have a few icons with threat types under the indicator. For instance, AI means Air Intercept Radar, or a fighter. PD means Pulse Doppler Radar. SAM means Surface to Air Missile. And AAA means Anti-Aircraft Artillery. You can find the full list of acronyms in the Controls Help menu that you can bring up by pressing F1. Look for the RWR Threat Types button in the bottom right corner. These systems also come with some flaws. If there are multiple radars within range, it's pretty hard for them to tell which signal comes from which source. RWRs from the third group have solved this issue. They can show identified threats right in the circle of the indicator, giving the pilot full data. Keep in mind, though, that even these RWRs can treat multiple radars in close proximity as a single target. 
The most advanced radar warning systems can do more than just identify the type of the threat. They can tell you a model using their databases, providing the pilot with maximum intel. Just remember that one radar model may be used on different aircraft, so an RWR can give you the wrong name. For instance, the F-16A, F-16C, and the F-4EJ Kai will all show up as F-16. The Yak-141 will be shown as the MiG-29, while the AV-8B will even show up as an F-18, a plane not currently present in the game. Another unique feature for modern receivers is the capability to detect more than just radar signals. They can also see the activation of illumination for semi-active homing missiles, as well as commands sent by the platform to the ordnance it launched. The RWR will alert the pilot with a launch message, which means you need to begin evasive maneuvers immediately. Well, we hope our physics lecture hasn't been too boring. Feel free to ask any questions on the topic. We'll do our best to answer them. And of course, don't hesitate to share your thoughts.